Namaste. Welcome to the wonderful world of Ayurveda, Yoga and Jyoti with Thiago Namaste. Enjoy. In life, we usually understand that we are happy because of our senses. In the Western culture, we live the idea like this. You have to have money. You have to have sex. You have to have friends. You have to have house. You have to have children. You have to have partners. Power. You have to have power. You have to have anything that is important in a sensory way. Like, these things exist outside me. And I have to reach it, I have to grab it, I have to control it, and this will make me feel happy. Right? This is the idea in the West of how you should handle your life. We are going to call this materialism. Okay? It's not the point that you have a partner, it's not the point that you have a car or a house, it's the importance that you say, this is going to make me feel happy. This is the most important thing that I have to use my energy to uh, drive my uh, life towards to, okay? And uh, the great guru of this energy is Shukra. We translate this as Venus, okay? So Venus is also related to entertainment. So in our, our life, we are uh, taught the idea that you should study, you should work with Mercury, and you should uh, uh, have a profession, you should earn money, that is also Mercury in a sense, and you should spend money with Venus, Shukra, so you're going to be happy. Okay? So these two uh, Grahas, they are mainly related to the Rajasic uh, way of functioning. This means I have the Ahankara sense, I will do this, and I will make the effort, and I will produce the result, and I will believe in the result, the, the product that I, we think that I made. This means I studied, I did the exams, I went to the university, I got the job. It's always I something, right? There is the concept of Ahankara, I and mine, and the concept that he or it is producing the result of the action. So, these two Grahas plus Rahu, so it's Shukra, Venus, Buddha, Mercury, and Rahu, we don't have a proper translation, it's usually called the head Raga, impels us in a Rajasic way of behavior to say that we are going to control the world. And if we control the world, we are going to make it our pleasure from it and we are going to believe that we are gods, and we are going to make science. And this is a very strong uh, combination of uh, Shukra, uh, Buddha, and Rahu. And this produces the materialism in the sense of capitalism, in the sense of things that you are going to be the self-made man, or you are going to be the merchant, or you are going to be things that you are living to produce, and to consume, and to be happy with your senses, okay? So this is not just like a silly thing. This is a cultural paradigm. This is an energetic paradigm that is leaded by Shukra, Rahu, and Buddha, okay? Mm -hmm. And we call this Western road, okay? You can say that uh, Shani, Saturn is also there, but uh, here we're going just to make two different uh, schemes of life. Okay? It's like a framework. It's a framework where we can understand what is what the uh, Vedic culture called the Asuras and the Devatas, the Suras. But the point is, in the beginning, there was the uh, unlimited point of being, that this is Aditi, and it, this created the Suras, the Devatas. This means the spiritual people. And spiritual people doesn't mean necessarily a person living in a monastery. We are going to understand this properly, okay? And there was also Diti, the limited point of view, that created the Asuras, the materialistic people. What is the point of materialistic, in this way, Asura uh, framework? You, the Ahankara, is going to make effort to control the nature 
and to make it to satisfy your desires. Mainly rajas is working. Okay? What is the point of suras or devatas? The thing that we believe that it's I is just an illusion, maya. This illusion creates the idea that you produce the results, but in the final sense, this is only kind of a, a fantasy. This is it's just, delusion. it's delusion, it's a kind of magic that we are entrapped, just like the Matrix, okay? So, in the Matrix, the guy that uh, wants to eat the meat is symbolic, it's just not like for a coincidence there. Materialistic people usually uh, tend to eat more meat because this makes our mind uh, more um, shrewd, more um, collapsed in our body. Our pranamaya kosha and our manamaya kosha, our capacity to expand our being without expanding our body, it's related to the capacity to eat vegetarian food and this kind of stuff. I'm not saying that Jesus did not uh, eat fish. The point is not about what you eat itself. It's the posture, okay? The spiritualistic point of view is like I'm part of a whole bigger scheme of life. Even if the person is, eat meat, is eating meat, understand the point properly. But if the person is eating just like vegetables saying, oh, this is only material stuff, there is no uh, utter purpose in life, if this is materialistic point of view. Materialistic point of view is just like we are molecules, we are chemical reactions, there is no spirit there. There is no big spirit there, okay? So, um, this combination creates the materialistic framework in one side that we call this uh, usually as sura, sorry, asura, it's badly translated as demoniac. Okay? But nowadays it's just like what everything is in the way that the normal, the regular thing in the way of today is being asura, being materialistic. Okay? The other uh, side is the sura or the devata, is that we are not doing any result of this. If today I'm working with, as a therapist or anything, it's not because I studied economics in the university and then I wanted to do this. Life itself has its ways to move ourselves from one room to another so we can just like play the divine role in existence. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this other side is the side that we are inspired to move towards a bigger goal that it's beyond the uh, small self. So the materialistic point of view is anchored in the small self. We call this ahamkara. The bigger self, we can call divine conscious, atma, whatever, is the idea of spiritualism. It can be the North Indians, it can be the Indians in Australia, it can be people in India, it doesn't matter where it is. It can be included in the United States. And the point is that spiritualistic people live from the idea that we are part of a bigger scheme of life. The divine existence um, propels us to uh, grow spiritually. This means that uh, you need to live in a cave in Himalayan hills. No, it can be also. But the point is that your life is moving towards self-knowledge and doing what is needed to the planets, to the society, to um, perpetuate itself. So mainly spirituality, in this sense, is promoting dharma and moksha. Dharma is playing the role that it needs to be done. Moksha is to self-study, to understand that we are part of God. Okay? The purushartas, the aims, the primal motivations of materialistic people is arta and kama. Arta is to produce material outputs and kama is to uh, use them, to consume them. Okay? But everyone needs dharma, arta, kama and moksha. 
But the point that the materialistic grounds, it says you are going to be fulfilled with artha and kama. And the spiritualistic people says this is a mistake of the small self. We are going to be only completely and finally uh, out of the matrix with dharma and moksha. Okay? So the point is that when we start Ayurveda, just like we are dealing mainly with artha, your health, and the, the things that you need to do in your daily writing to uh, start to be a little bit healthy with your agni. Okay? And then, after this, you start to like a little bit to wake up in the morning, do some Surya Namaskar and this kind of stuff. So you start to say, oh, there is, there, it's possible that we enjoy things in life that are not strictly materialistic. We are not going to the gymnastics and be in front of the mirror with strong muscles and this kind of stuff. It can be, but the point is that you are looking a little bit more inside yourself. Okay? So, during the course of time, we start to uh, be more in a frequency where we can appreciate the sattvic form of living. So, we start with our digestion and this kind of stuff. Then we start to increase sattva in our uh, daily routine and our mental habits. We start to uh, chant mantras and all this kind of stuff. So we reali realize that karma, that uh, our ability to be happy with existence, to have pleasure with existence, actually is inside us, not actually outside us in a cup of beer. Okay? So when we start to have more a pleasure in sattvic ground, making meditation, yoga, whatever, you still can go to the party, but there probably you're not going to feel so much in the same frequency as people using alcohol or whatever, because you know, man, this is going to disturb my body so much. And I can have the same thing, uh, walking in the park, meditating, and uh, chanting mantras and this kind of stuff. You start to... Sorry? And no hangover. Yeah, you're going to hang in, not over, right? And uh, you're going to start to realize, not that someone told you, and you read in a book, but you say, man, this is much better for me to live from within, not from without. And then when this starts, you start to realize that you have uh, uh, like a... Uh, a role to play in the divine drama of existence. And then you start to ask, what is my dharma here? What is the purpose that my life uh, upholds existence? Uh, the dharmic, dharmic existence doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to need to be a priest in the middle of the jungle. And this is not the point for everyone always. Your dharmic purpose, it can be in, uh, inclusively working in a financial market. It, we don't need to understand that dharmic thing is just like working in a monastery or like this. The dharmic purpose is every role in the existence needs some actors there. And sometimes it's going to be in the financial market, sometimes it's going to be in a monastery or whatever. Okay? We shouldn't understand that Following the Dharma is to going against material, material existence. It's not being inside materialism itself. Okay? You can uh, earn a billion a year. This doesn't mean that this is against spirituality. What is the idea? What is the feeling? What is the existence there? Is that the main important point? Okay? And then we, when you realize that you are serving a higher purpose in existence, you start to realize that the utmost uh, challenge, the utmost uh, destination for our spiritual development is self-awareness, uh, moksha. It's liberation, illumination, whatever word you want to use. But the idea is that there is something beyond material existence, here I'm not saying any more materialism, I'm saying that there is something beyond material existence, this is transcendental experience, this is moksha. 
when you attain moksha, this doesn't mean that you just like need to deincarnate and die or something like this. You can have moksha while you're living in your body and start to realize that all actually is just divine experience. But this is not a concept that you say, oh, I understand this. It's just every cell in your body, it can be just like decapitated there, and you say, oh, this is just divine experience with all your cells, even if you're decapitated. You understand the, the idea? Moksha is not the point that, oh, it can be also. You transform into yourself into light and the, all this kind of stuff. This also is, exists. But the moksha here, for us now, it's still just self-awareness, understanding in our experience that we are part of divine drama and this is divinely beautiful. This is the main purpose of the idea of moksha now. Okay, here? Yes? <laughs> the mind is shaking. Indian. <laughs> Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Sharanam Ganesha